and delight to be here this morning. I talk to you about <coughs> the future of rural India. Let me start by asking a question. <coughs> Why is rural India important to us? I think there are five reasons. The first is that 70% of our people, not statistical numbers, but <coughs> human beings, people, live in rural India. Number two, Number two, all raw material for our factories comes from rural India, whether it is coal, metals, minerals, any other raw material. And 75% of all new factories that have come up in the last decade have been in rural India. Therefore, all people from around those areas actually then come and find work there. So the success of the Make in India campaign will depend to a large extent on land, raw materials, and resources being made available by rural India. Our culture, values, traditions, festivals, all oriented in rural India. So we are rooted in rural India. And finally, our very survival depends on rural India because all our food comes from rural India. Our villages and towns have a hub and spoke relationship. There are about 80 villages for every town. But when you look at the spread of uh, these towns population-wise, we find that 7,000 towns are really small with populations less than 100,000, some even down to 5 or 10,000, and therefore they cannot provide sustenance to many villages. It is really the 560 towns in the 100,000 to 1 million category, which, if planned properly, can provide employment to large numbers of people. Let me explain this with an example. On the left, you see old Rudrapur in Uttaranchal. This is like any town anywhere in the country, unplanned. Then, in 2004, an industrial estate was established here, and uh, the, the basic infrastructure was provided by the state government in terms of roads, electricity, water, sanitation. Tata Nano, Ashok Leland, PNG, Colgate, and many other companies set up their factories here. Today, and then the, uh, the workers came from around 200 surrounding villages. And uh, and, and most of them came on their newly acquired two-wheelers because the road connectivity and the condition of road has become so good that they can now walk down from their villages, but they work in these uh, factories. And today, Rudrapur has 1,200 branded stores. It has 40 private schools in English medium, some of them century air conditioned. It has five star hotels. It has housing complexes. So, Rutherford has got completely transformed. And this investment for the more modern infrastructure has come from private uh, people who once they saw the economic boom coming up in uh, Rutherford have moved into. Uh, to set up this infrastructure. So state governments need to identify and do a competitive analysis of towns in this 100,000 to 1 million uh, population categories in their own states and then 
decide what kind of a hub can be set up in these areas. For example, Udaipur in Rajasthan would be a natural hub for tourism. It has a population of about four and a half lakhs. Jalandhar in Punjab has a population of close to a million and it could easily become the sports manufacturing hub uh, and so on and so forth. So you have to really decide on uh, these hubs. And, and once the state government provides basic infrastructure, then the more modern infrastructure will follow as happened in rural. And the other thing is that over the last 30 years, we find that the rate of migration into the mega cities of Delhi, Mumbai, and Calcutta has been coming down sharply because these cities have become more congested and there is very little possibility of starting any more new economic activities. At the same time, the population of satellite towns like Gurgaon, uh, Noida, Faridabad, Ghaziabad, the populations have been going up rapidly because these towns offer low cost of living and they also offer much better job opportunities. Because as we know in cities like Delhi, all offices and service centers are being moved out into uh, these smaller locations like Urgaon. So the new job opportunities are really coming up here. The, the structure of the rural economy has undergone a complete transformation in the last decade. Agriculture is now the smallest contributor to the rural GDP. And it is not because agriculture has not grown. It is because the other sectors have grown much faster. And the services sector now provides opportunities to millions of people for jobs in the construction, health, education, and financial services uh, sectors. So we find that <clears throat> the, the number of salary jobs in rural India has doubled over the, in the last decade. And now about 22% of people earn their livelihood to regular salary because they've got jobs in these uh, different sectors as I mentioned. And, 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 and these, therefore, the, the household income has become much more stable right, and reliable. Whereas, earlier, you had the harvesting unpredictable income. Therefore, the, the whole rural economy is moving to a more stable economy, which is good for the economy. <coughs> As I said, agriculture has not been growing that fast because not enough investment has been coming into agriculture. But recent governments have realized that agriculture offers a huge opportunity and therefore a lot of private and public investment has come into the sector in recent years. And we find that uh, the supply chains are becoming more robust, warehouses are coming up. So a, 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 a mechanization is uh, happening in a big way in agriculture. So therefore, we find that uh, agriculture now has become a new opportunity. And I, I believe that India can become the food basket of the world because we have all the 14 agroclimatic regions and we can grow any variety of food that is available on this planet. Secondly, we have the largest area under agriculture anywhere in the world. So with, with these givens, agriculture can then provide employment to many more people. In the last decade, we have pulled out 100 million people out of power. This decade, hopefully, we will pull out another 150 million people. The good thing about rural income growth is that it is inclusive, it is equitable, and it is sustainable. Unlike in urban where we know that the top 1% of the richest people in the world 
have, have not developed that remaining 99%. So it is very skewed uh, income growth. India is a young nation in an aging world. The government is committed to scaling 500 million people by 2022. By that time, India will have a surplus of 57 million skilled people and there will be a global shortage of about 46 million. So India <coughs> can become the skills capital to the world. And the good news is that with the spread of English medium private schools in rural India, because 75% of the workforce will come from rural India, they will be English educated and therefore they will be globally more employed. IT and IT enabled services will ensure democratization of uh, information as it reaches millions of uh, people in rural India. And this easy access to information will ensure better incomes, more knowledge, and better practices. Let me just explain this better income uh, opportunity. We have about 100 million daily wage labor. In the past, a daily wage worker would go and wait at the labor shop every morning in search of work. And if uh, the contractor came and there was no work for him, he would lose his wages for the day. Today, all these people have a mobile phone. So the first thing this daily wage, the same daily wage labor now does is that it calls up all the local contractors and find out, find out who can offer him work and then goes and works for him. So this has improved his productivity because now the number of days worked has gone up sharp. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and the, the government is really working to making rural India a digital world. So we know that broadband connectivity uh, cables are being laid for connecting all the ground contacts in uh, rural India. And then you have these 100 million internet users and 350 million mobile phones. And this is on the increase. So a lot of information will come <coughs> through these uh, platforms. And <coughs> the, the 100 million bank accounts that have been opened up under Jantan and the IT backbone for in the banking sector that we have now, this will ensure direct transfer of enticements, which will then reduce leakages and reduce the payment time. So all this will help make things much more uh, efficient. Developed countries have excellent physical infrastructure in terms of roads, electricity, water, sanitation. But they have a weak social infrastructure because there are not that many poor to serve. In India, we have a fairly weak uh, physical infrastructure, at least in rural India, but we have an excellent social infrastructure. We have 10 uh, dozens of self-help groups in every village of rural India. We have an ASHA worker for every thousand people, Anandwadi workers, post office in every fourth village of uh, rural India. So the social infrastructure is excellent. And this is what we used when we co-created Project Shakti with Unity, where some of you may be knowing about this uh, work, where we identified and selected women from self-help groups because these women could now take a loan from the group since Unity has a cash and carry policy. And these women are now going around and selling these goods in their own village in neighboring villages. And there are 50,000 of these women who are now earning their livelihoods through this uh, opportunity. So the real challenge is how do we leverage this social infrastructure? For example, if the Reserve Bank of India were to grant a banking license 
to India Post. India Post would set up 140,000 ATMs in rural India because they had post office uh, branches in all these places. So this could be used for cash deposits, for withdrawals, and also for extending loans to migrant enterprises. So, I mean, compare this with the banking sector, even after 65 years, has only 35,000 branches of banks in, uh, in rural India. Whereas the post office, at the press of a button, could set up these 140,000. Uh, or, if we can train uh, these uh, youth club uh, members to construct and maintain toilets, we need a hundred million toilets in rural India, so this can be a lifeblood opportunity for the youth for, for a number of years. So, <clears throat> in the end, what I would say is that rural is the social, economic, cultural, and political soul of India. We need to nurture it so that India can emerge as a great nation. Thank you very much.